All right. Really quick, we covered a lot of ground right there, game planning, scout report, and, and kind of our views on game prep or practice from week to week and season. Uh, when we get to a game and we're ready to call plays and, and uh, the strategy of that game, we've got to have a lot of things in place. Now, I'm going to go through several slides here that touch on a lot of things related to special team or play calling in general. Um and when we call plays, guys, it's uh, to me, there's a lot that goes into it. It's one of the harder things to do in coaching, uh, but it has layers to it, and we'll talk about that. First of all, play calling is a very broad topic. Just like any of these topics, you ask 10 coaches, you may get 10 answers. There's a lot of ways to do it right, probably a lot of ways to do it wrong. But I really feel like it's one of the most analyzed, scrutinized, and criticized parts of coaching. Uh, and what makes it challenging to me is ever-changing variables during the game. First of all, you always got to be aware of time, the overall time in the game, the immediate time of the play clock. Clock is always tell our players, we always have to have the sense of urgency. We'll never run team without a an awareness of time. We won't stop the play, talk at the line of scrimmage from play to play. We're going to be in game mode anytime we run team reps. Uh, that's another practice component we'll stick to. But personnel, you know, you, you know, we always – figuring out the matchups as the game's going on. We have a thought going into the game, but during the game, some of those thoughts may change favorably or unfavorably. So we have to consider our, our, our matchups, talent, injuries occur on their side, on our side, and how we want to be aware of that. Then the overall strategy chess match of the game itself. What are we trying to do? What are they doing to counteract that? And uh, what's available to us play-wise? Uh, all that is factored in. Then, obviously, situational football. So we're going to talk about today. Down distance hats, field position, what's the score, what's the weather, what's the field. Sometimes we've come out in second half and it's pouring down rain or the wind has changed. Things like that can change on you quickly. And then internally, sometimes us chasing ghosts. Sometimes we're on our own worst enemies. I've had players tell me at halftime, coach, they know what we're doing. They're saying this, saying that. Well, if the defense is guessing and they're saying stuff to your players, they're probably trying to scare or spook them. And tell them this. If they're not doing something defensively to prove that they really are true to their convictions of what they think you're trying to do, like three guys go line up in the same gap or really stunt to your your uh, play every time, then they're just guessing. Just remember, they have a 50-50 guess on run pass or right or left. So help help your players out and, and don't get caught up in, in, in that mindset. There's layers to play calling. To me, when somebody says, oh, man, that guy, so-and-so, coach, so-and-so is a heck of a play caller. To me, it's not a standalone thing where you, you know, you're not isolated in a bubble and you're picking plays out of a bucket or a hat. Uh, what leads to good play calling, first of all, is a, a good offensive philosophy and foundation and a great install of everything in your offense. Personnel and opponents, we have to consider that going into play calling and matchups. Then we obviously have to plan, practice, and prepare for uh, any particular game. We have to have communication in place. For the way we do things to maximize play calling, we've got to be able to communicate the line of scrimmage. There's a lot of stuff we do. And play systems is a big part of that. We call them safe systems. We'll talk about those in just a minute. And I think it's important to train with your coaches as often as possible through film of how and why you call plays and get their thoughts and input to help them out. But also you, you will gain info, information from them that you may have overlooked. Now, I think all offenses, whether you're very – Traditional base, like a split back veer team, wing tee, or your wide open spread. I think they're all looking for common ground, and that's finding the good grass. You're looking for a numbers advantage, the path of least resistance. You're looking for some kind of angle, bubble, or leverage advantage inside the box or outside the box. We're looking for space, unoccupied or available, both pre or post snap. We're looking for personnel matchups, both in a run or pass game or in a blocking matchup. Uh, defensive looks, you're looking for a front that you can uh, stay away from something or attack something or coverage specific. And so you have plays designed for, for both those fronts and, and coverage looks. And then how different offenses attack these elements varies and looks different, but we're all looking for the same things, whether it's a shade advantage uh, from a two or three technique or to cover two or, or, or cover three on the perimeter or whatever. Two important questions, I think, as a play caller that you deserve to ask yourself. 
And number one is, have you ever called a play and didn't have the ability to fix it or change it once the defense was lined up? And that play really didn't have a chance for success based on the defensive look. So you were forced into a bad play or maybe wasted timeout. Old way of doing it, that's what coaches did. They scripted plays and they called them and they lived with them. But I think these days, defensive guys are a lot more willing to change things up and give you a different look, even if they have a sound defensive philosophy. So that that process to me, uh, you know, when I was a younger coach, much younger coach, we did this. And I think back to how many times you call a play and you really didn't have a chance to fix it. And, and that's kind of a regretful play calling feeling. Second question is after calling a play that didn't succeed, would you still call that play based on the same information that you were given or had available? If not, then what's broken in that process? And we'll talk about ways to evaluate that shortly. But if you if you felt the way you did because of planning and, and communication during the game and taking all the variables play for play, then don't second guess yourself, even if the result was not what you wanted. Because I don't think it's fair or productive to judge a play call purely on results. Make uh, We may question the play calling processes, but not the play call. So when somebody says, man, that was a terrible play call, what, why did we call that? That, that's a fan mentality, not a coach mentality. And we want to stay away from that as coaches for sure. And also try to teach our players that because you should, I'm sure they hear things from, you know, their fan base as well. Play calling do's and don'ts. This is for us. It may not apply to anybody else, but this is how over many, many years of doing this, we call the game as we see it. We do call the game that way. What is happening now? We do try to be unselfish and put the team needs first. We don't want to have ego call in place. I don't want to say, man, I'm going to keep throwing the ball because I want a quarterback to get, you know, 250 yards pass a night, whatever. Uh, again, a yard, that's what YPW stands for. A yard's a yard, a point's a point, a win's a win, no matter how it comes. So we got to take it that way as, as coaches. We don't want to be bored. We want to be effective play calling, um, over exciting. We're not going to just go call a play because it, it's going to wow the crowd. We don't script plays. There's no guarantee that it, it, it'll be what we see Friday night from the opponent. So scripting the plays could be a waste of time. Now, I know guys in the flex bone that will script formations, and I think there's value to that, to early on try to see your main formations to see what their plan is. I, I do like that idea, but we don't necessarily script plays. We don't try to break tendencies. We don't self-scout ourselves because we don't develop a tendency based on a, on, on a, on a script. That's how you develop tendencies, in my opinion. We call the base the game based on the game that we're currently playing. And the last thing is we don't try to establish or satisfy a percentage of quota that we run a certain play. We want to talk about what's good now because you may not have time later. High school football games go really, really fast, as y'all know. So we want to focus on what's important now. Our play, play call and mission statement basically comes down to this. All teams call plays that don't succeed as planned. We will get out executed or outmanned by the defense at times, or they'll just have a very good, well-timed stunt or scheme uh, on that play. Uh, but we never want a play to be unsuccessful. As a result of something that we could have controlled pre-snap, we want the final say before the play. We want to have the chalk last. I know chalk no longer really exists in schools, but the marker last or the pen last or the laser beam last, whatever. But – Things that we can control is what the play we actually get to. Whether we call a play at the line, check it, we have a choice of plays, we change a play, or we confirm a called play all after we see the defense. The side that we actually run to, and there's things that can affect that. The look, personnel, whatever. The scheme of the play, uh, you know, certain blocking schemes are designed for certain fronts and not others. So that is uh, very, very big important for us. So how to call plays. <laughs> that's a million dollar question. Uh, it's a very difficult question to answer. A lot, a lot of correct answers. Uh, and not one that's better than the other. It's one that's best for your team and your system, I guess. I like to say it, it's subjective rabbit holes that's based on several things. Subjective means it's kind of uh, beauties in the eye of the beholder or the person that actually is doing it. Rabbit holes is what's your thought process of what you're trying to do uh, on most nights. The mind, mindset and the personality of the play caller. First of all, we, hopefully that's within the, the focus and the philosophy of the team from the head coach on down. No two coaches are the same, but it should fit into that uh, philosophy already developed. The matchup and scheme thoughts going into the game, personnel-wise, schematically, 
and man for man, the ever changing variables, as we previously mentioned, gathered information as the game situations uh, occur in front of you. Uh, we have game and opponent stops leading the game, but we again ultimately call it protected, uh, protected meaning play systems as we see it. There's a few different types of, I kind of like to categorize play calls. We have calls that we run sometimes that are probing calls. A lot of guys in this offense will use a play like zone dive to get a safe inside running play, no matter how they're lined up, to look at other things on the perimeter of how the perimeter may look on triple option. That's a great example. Protected calls, play systems. We're going to cover that shortly. Reactionary calls is we see a, a, a five-tech squeezing hard. We may call a playoff the, after that, but we're going to confirm the same look to protect it. But it's a reactionary call based on how the defense is playing. Situational calls, of course, you always got to call plays with the mindset of what's the down distance. Or, or are we in two-minute mode? Is it a two-point play? Whatever the situation may be. <clears throat> Then we have play, player or program uh, calls. Most of our calls in a flex bone offense are program calls. What is, what you know is the defense giving us system wise that we can take advantage of where we need to run certain things. But occasionally we'll have a player or dude, as you say, where we want to get him the ball. We want to have some ways to force the ball in his hands without being obvious uh, or easy to defend with it. Blind calls. This is when you call a play and you live with it. Your line scrimmage, no matter what, you're going to run that play. To me, we usually protect that with an element of surprise, such as an unusual formation and or maybe a quick uh, tempo cadence. And then special calls kind of goes with blind calls. If we want to run in some type of really creative play uh, that's not usual, it's similar to blind call. We may confirm a look or make sure they're not going to do something that would hurt that play. But other than that, we're going to live with it. 